Um, but she said it was a, it was up utmost respect, but everybody knew their place and women really never had a chance to, um, go ahead. They, young feel female lawyers, um, were treated, they were seen as inferior. And she'd say, yeah, has that changed? Look, it has. Um, it's, it's not changing fast enough. Women have been um, more than 50% of graduates out of universities for a very long time now. Um, it's up to sort of 65% or something. But women in leadership in the legal profession is still, um, is, is still well below uh, 50%, um, you know, barristers who are kind of the st high status part of our, our, our profession in a way. Um, it's still only around about 25% female. Um, the bench, the lower levels of the bench are doing very well in terms of gender equity in, in the magistrates courts. Um, but as you get up into the Supreme Court, it's much less. Um, the high court, interestingly, is getting very much more gender equal um, where it's imminent that we're going to have two new high court judges uh, appointed shortly so it'll be interesting to see how that goes um, but we're you know we're, we're seeing and, and senior partners in the large law firms uh, again there's not gender equity there um, at the lower level of all of these organizations you see you see women uh, taking an equal share, but at the higher levels, you, you don't. Um, and that's still got to change and women still earn less than men do in law. So that's, um, that's got to change. Uh, so I, I think that, yes, we're, we're treated well um, in lots of ways, but there's still, there is still a gender divide in the law. Mm. You know, it's, it's interesting. My niece, I think, is 25 she um, finished her HSC with full marks in her HSC and she had, did I think, law commerce at, at Sydney with full scholarship for her whole um, education, was then wooed by, you know, seven of the, the top firms. And she, she chose a second tier for its culture. She said, yeah. that's where I want to be. And then she fell in love with one of the partners, so she had to leave yeah. the organisation. <laughs> And during lockdown, she's decided she just doesn't want to do it. She, you know, after all of this, she's really, she's going to study to do coaching. Yeah. And, you know, I just said, I, that's not a life. It's not a life. I, so I think, you know, cultural fit sometimes, you know, at those upper echelons, it's like, I get to choose and that's not what I choose. Well, that's very much right, Karen. Uh, when I was a very young, my first job um, after graduating was, in fact, at a large law firm. And I literally lasted 10 weeks. <laughs> I just went, no, this doesn't, this doesn't fit me. And, and I accepted a job that I was offered out at Campbelltown in a criminal law firm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was much happier there. So even though it was, it was a fraction of pay, mm -hmm. but I, I knew it was that life was not going to be for me. I realised very soon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's, uh, there's some tricky questions here. Margot, your, your question I don't think is for, for us to answer, but I'm going to put it in case Pauline's got something to say and maybe we can hear from Martin, um, which is why is it that my ex-partner thinks that it's still okay to beat up his current partner? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that, that is such a, a difficult question. You know, I had a client who, who was accused of, she was charged with murder because her de facto husband was beating her with an iron, a domestic iron. And she picked up a little vegetable knife that was on the sideboard next to her and stabbed him once and he died. Well, after she was charged and she was in trial, a woman who had been an ex-partner of his came forward and said, he did this to me too. So she gave evidence at my client's trial and my client was acquitted. 
So thank you to Margot for asking that question because that's precisely what this brave woman did. She came forward and said, I, she didn't want to see a woman convicted of murder um, when she knew how violent her ex-partner had been. And, um, and I'm very grateful to her for being so brave to come forward with that. It's, it's, um, it's important that women do speak up 